Now, you guys might be wondering why I am so happy. Well, there's a lot of great stuff happening right now. Not only is Mr. Sonic the Hedgehog going to be in the background for this video oh, because wow. we're talking about video games, but Let's also go. we hit 700,000 subscribers oh, and Cherry go. Soda is coming out on February 24th. It's war? going to premiere live. Before I talk about the Cherry Soda release, thank you guys so much for 700,000 subscribers. Can't wait for someone to get mad at me for saying I say thank you too much. Dude, we're getting closer and closer to a million subscribers every upload, and I can't wait for the comments. Tub used to make better content before he hit a mil. He changed after a mil. So, the song, yeah. Cherry Soda. <laughs> Is my You'll first enjoy that, I guess. Song, like actual like song song that's gonna be on streaming services and it's gonna premiere here on the channel on February 24th at 6 p.m. PST. Also, make sure to pre-save it on Spotify. The link will be down in the description. I am fully aware that this song is not gonna be for everyone, and I'm okay with that. I mean, chill? not everyone likes KSI's music, right? We when YouTubers seen this, make music, there's always we? a certain stigma, though I really like KSI's music. I don't think so. Lie. Don't think this is some Logan Paul little brother Jakey I've been trying playing to diss Elden me. Ring. Like, no. Like I actually it's really like what I mean for a genre. I guess yeah it's hyper pop and I can't wait for you guys to see it and I hope you guys add it to your playlist and I've always made music but I'm finally able to release it because I know you guys you guys really fuck with me and if you guys don't like it that's totally okay I'm not gonna fucking what am I gonna do get mad at you like no I'm not please you please, please be there for the premiere please I've never Here's done a premiere on my channel video. I don't know how many live viewers we're gonna get but please be there for the premiere notifications you guys got me oh yeah I also want to say I'm not a youtuber that's switching over to music I am a youtuber that does music as well I've always wanted to be both youtuber and an artist I am not just gonna peace YouTube I'm gonna be a full-time artist no no, y'all are my babies. Work right. for anyway, Jody. today we're gonna be talking about the most controversial video games. For the most part, I try to look for video games that are not really that well known. So you guys have some fresh content. All my sources will be linked down in the description below. I guarantee I'll know all the of video. them. I'm Night confident Trap, I'll know 1992. all of them. 1992. I was immediately wrong. The fuck is Night Trap? Night Trap was a game released in 1992 designed for the Sega CD, an attachment for the Sega Genesis. The Sega CD added hardware functionality such as a faster CPU and graphic enhancements. Sega tried to match the capabilities of the competing PC Engine CD-ROM system, but failed to do PCs so. One of the games work. playable on the Sega CD was Night Trap, an interactive movie video game developed by Digital Pictures. The game is shown mainly through the use of full motion video. In this game, the player takes a role of a special agent tasked One to of watch these over games. teenage girls having a sleepover, <laughs> and those girls are are visiting a house which they don't know is full of danger. The player watches live surveillance <laughs> footage of the house and triggers traps to capture anyone seen endangering the girls. Watch I mean, out. Designing a game where you're supposed to watch a bunch of underage girls having a sleepover is already pretty weird, but designing a storyline where they're gonna get hurt, it's a little bit... Uh, nah, it's not it. Oh, the player can shit. Sorry to pause so quickly. This just, this just poured salt in an old wound. Who remembers? I think it was two years ago. That game they tried to make about a, uh, was it a female streamer? It was a full motion interactive game. Or, yeah, full full motion interactive game, whatever. A live movie. What was it called? Because I can't remember it now. Was it Gamer Girl? Was it actually just called Gamer Girl? It might have been. And they canceled it because it got clowned on so hard. Rest in peace. This game would have been fucking amazing. Peggy, 18. Okay, cool. Water time, break time. Oh, yeah, you play as the moderator. Oh, Fuck! Dunk has been taken out my stream. Fuck! It would have been so good. Oh, come on. No. I'll skip around a little okay. bit, but you, see, you get to the big reveal. I was so hyped for this game, but yeah, it got canceled because it got so much <laughs> shit tossed at it. Damn. Thanks, recent floppy. I mean, they filmed most of the game. They should just release it, man. Why not? Like, why? Why just hold on to that? Let us. Let us have it. Go independent. Like shit. I, I mean, I'll finance it. I, I want to fucking play it. I want to see what it was. Who, what was the studio behind that? Let me look. Like, what do they want? Like, 100 bucks, maybe? Wales Interactive. Jesus, do all their games get pulled? What the fuck is all this? 
Oh, no, no, wait, these actually did get published. It's just they were not popular. Hey, if you're watching this, Wales Interactive, I will buy a gamer girl from you. In whatever state it's in. I, I, I still really want to play that pile of shit. I mean, you're not doing anything with it. Fucking, what, on like a flash drive or something? Like, I'll, I'll take it from you. I'll put that shit on Steam for free. Just for the love of the sport, goddammit. I want to see that game. Badly. No, I didn't do the new Destiny 2 raid. And if Gamer Girl comes out, I may never I may never need another video game. This has everything you could ever want from gaming. Switch their view between different cameras. Insert Five Nights at Freddy's reference here. To keep watch over the girls and eavesdrop on conversations to follow along the story and listen for clues. Some there are some pretty funny scenes in this game, I'm not gonna lie. But his game looks awesome. Night Trap was one of two games criticized during the 1993 congressional hearings on violent video games. The other was Mortal Kombat. Public oh, concern wow. grew surrounding the video game after claims were made that it included <clears throat> an extreme amount of violence and promoted SA against women. When I say SA, it's that. I just don't want to get demonetized so yeah as a result night trap was pulled from the shelves of major video game retailers and the following month sega stopped production of the game altogether the senate hearings that revolved around night traps apparent violence resulted in the creation of the entertainment software rating oh, board wow. it's the esrb which is still used to this day the game was given an m for mature audiences which means 17 years or older in the states who is she being hunted by foot ninjas Super from Columbine teenage Massacre mutant ninja turtles RPG. 2005. Six years after the I've events that happened one. at Columbine one. High School, Danny Ladon, a video game developer, decided it would be a good idea to release an RPG PC game based around Eric Harris and Dylan Klebold. In fact, he chose to release it on April 20th, 2005, which was the sixth year anniversary of the incident. He initially distributed the game anonymously, but after a friend of one of the victims discovered his identity, Ladon decided to come out as the creator. About yeah, 10,000 people had downloaded the game in the year since its creation. The game is no longer available on Ladon's website. <laughs> Instead, it has popped up on a number of sites and download services. Ladon initially accepted donations to defray the cost of hosting the game, but stopped when he took the game off his site. He said he's making no money on the free distribution of the game. When oh, he's working on in now. battle, the screen changes to a first-person view of the enemy. And Enemies are named stereotypes or occupations such as preppy girl, janitor, math teacher, and a jock type. Yeah, Combat has up. two options, autoplay, where the game chooses the weapon to use, or manual play, in which the player decides to use a hand-to-hand -hand weapon, explosive, gun, or defensive maneuver against foes. Once a battle starts, it is impossible to avoid or escape. The player must kill the enemy or die. Text narrates battle events and actions such as finding a bag or gaining a weapon. As the game proceeds, flashbacks occur showing events in Eric and Dylan's lives which may have caused them to commit murder. Much of the plot is constructed around the events precisely as they are believed to have occurred. Lines of the gunman's dialogue are often lifted verbatim from their writings or from their home videos of each other. In contrast to the 16-bit graphics, there are digitalized photographs from the shooting or full voice samples from news reports. Reaction to Super yeah, this one was Massacre really was fucking dark, negative. Man. The title was criticized as trivializing the actions of Eric and Dylan and the lives of the innocent. The hate was so much so that Ladon ended up removing the game altogether from his website. You know what sucks, guys? That this isn't the only shooting RPG that we're going to talk about. What is he doing now? I actually never followed up on this. I've known about that for a long time. Uh, what was his name again? Exit tier one Astro in the Gifts of Rainbow. What what was his first name? Something Ladon. Radon. Good Elden Ring reference. Did he not say his first name? Uh oh, Daniel Ladon. Is it like this? That didn't work. Maybe like this. No, that's definitely not going to be it. And unless it's him with the obituary. Oh, thank you for the 
Jesus, thank you for the 10 gift subs, Fishy, and the 5 gift subs, Karma. Thank you for that. And thanks for the Prime Sins. Thank you for the generosity, Fishy, and Karma. Danny Ladon. We'll say that in his Daniel. How do you spell his name? Okay, how about this? We'll just look it up like this. Well, this is going to be a dangerous Google search, actually. I'm not doing that. And thank you for the 5 gift subs, Cheese. Thank you for someone spelled that out for me. Okay, let's see what he's up to. It doesn't even have anything about the super colony. Oh, here it is. It's up here. Okay, so he only made one game. And it was this one. Damn. Yeah, it's fucked up. I, I had assumed he maybe stayed in the video game industry, but I guess not. Thanks to the resub, Boop and Sun. Yeah, uh, I don't know what mindset you have to be in to uh, make a video make game out of wah -wah. that. But um, yeah, we have a lot more on the list. Custer's Revenge, 1982. I, no, I know this one. Custer's Revenge was an adult action game published by American Atari. Multiple Industries for the Atari 2600. First released in November 1982, the game gained notoriety owing to its goal of being a Native American woman. In the game, the player controls the character named Custer, depicted as a man wearing nothing but a cavalry hat. Yeah, Atari gloves, games are pretty wild. With a visible... You know, Custer has to overcome arrow attacks to reach the other side of the screen. His goal is to rape a Native American woman tied to a pole. Custer's Revenge quickly gained notoriety upon its release. It was sold in a sealed package labeled Not For Sale to Minors and sold for $49.95. $49 for that? $4 today. It acknowledged that children might nonetheless see the game. The $49 game's literature stated, for a if the kids catch level? you and should ask, tell them Custer and, like, and the Maiden are just dancing. Women's rights groups criticized the game, stating that it was a simulation of other groups, such as Women Against Pornography, Native American Spokespersons, and critics of the adult video game industry in general protested about the content of the game. Activists tried pressuring legislators to outlaw the game, which Oklahoma City, home Nova to the large Native, the Native American population, Yates did. Too. The focused media attention generated publicity for the game and caused it to sell approximately 80,000 copies, twice as many as the company's other video games. American Multiple Industries responded with, quote, Our object is not to arouse, our object is to entertain. When people play our games, <laughs> we want them smiling, we want them laughing. The game's designer, Joel Miller, said Custer was, quote, what? seducing the maiden and that she was a willing participant. By April 1983, the game was what withdrawn the... from stream. What? What a fucking weirdo. So, I mean, he had to blur the game out, obviously, but the game is literally that one guy with a, a wiener and one girl, and you just, the two of them just, like, collide like two action figures, because it's the Atari. Like, it's not entertaining or anything. And he's certainly not seducing. There's no cutscenes or anything. It's just an actual rape simulator for the Atari. Is he still in the gaming industry? Did he go on to work for any other big projects? Maybe he like had a huge glow up and he helped work on like, I don't know, what's a beloved title? Red Dead 2. Hey Chase. He works at Blizzard now. <laughs> Ah, okay. So it comes full circle then. Circulation. I may have Maybe blurred it. I'm sorry for that, but like, I am not risking anything. Maybe resub unique. Especially with a topic like this. I know I'm just going to be blurring pixels on the screen. Sorry, you guys are, hey, might Andy. have to deal with some blur, but I hope you can still tell what's going on and being talked about. Hatred, 2015. Yeah, this one was big. What is important? It just wanted to be as edgy as possible. 
When I think of the most controversial video game, I think of Hatred. Hatred is a gruesome shooter game presented in an isometric perspective, in which the playable character and protagonist is a mass murdering villain who, quote, hates this world and the human worms feasting on its carcass, and embarks on a genocide crusade against the entire human race. The player can carry three weapons and an assortment of grenades, as well as drive some vehicles. Health is regenerated by performing glory kills on people. This was a rare case of a video game being given the adults only ESRB rating. Yep, games I with remember the this AO whole rating thing. are considered by the board to be suitable for players ages 18 and over. Most retailers refuse to stock AO rated games, and Twitch actually bans all. AO games. They don't want to associate with that. The only mainstream platform to allow AO games is Steam, but even Steam hides the AO games by default. JFK Reloaded, Oh, he didn't, he didn't talk about that very much. Hatred had a really actually interesting history. They announced it and they tried to defend it like we should be able to tell whatever stories we want to tell in the video game medium without being ostracized. This is actually a commentary and this and that. When really it was obvious what they were doing is they were trying to capitalize off like Edge. Like, they just tried to make something super edgy, and hopefully it would mask that the game itself wasn't that well made. So, they banked on it just being like, this is gonna sell our game. And it didn't work. So, they got... It, they instantly got thrown to the curb. They had a really hard time releasing the game. And when they finally did, nobody gave a shit. Genuinely, no one cared at all about the game. The controversy was forgotten... The controversy only lasted, like, in the public eye for, like, a week, maybe. And then the game came out, and it fucking flopped. JFK Reloaded is a 2004 first-person shooter game developed and published by Traffic Games. It simulates the 1963 well. assassination of John F. Kennedy, the 35th President of the United States. The player, controlling Lee Harvey Oswald, is tasked with recreating the three shots fired at Kennedy and gains higher scores the more accurately they lined up with the report. Shots I didn't know that. Slow motion and from multiple viewpoints. As Kennedy's motorcade like passes on elite. Delay Plaza, the player has to take three shots at the President with their sniper rifle. They gain points based on how closely these shots match the Warren Commission's report. The first has to miss the car, the second hit Kennedy in the neck, and John Cannoli, the governor of Texas, in the chest, and the third fatally hit Kennedy in the head. The perfect score is Holy 1, shit, wait, well, this is really thorough. The player from pursuing alternative scenarios, that the score is deducted system. when the player goes off script from the event, such as hitting Jacqueline Kennedy, the first lady. JFK Reloaded was denounced by several public figures like David Smith, a spokesman for Ted Kennedy, stating simply that it's despicable. Politician John Kasich discussed the game a in weird his book, concept for a something, game, The Battle like, for America's Soul, and a second kind of graphic interesting content in mainstream video games. I'm not gonna lie, the game actually has some really cool bullet physics. It reminds me of like Sniper Elite physics. I don't know if you guys have ever played that That's game, what I said. but it's very similar. I mean, obviously, I don't have to explain why this is controversial. <laughs> for some of them, I do have to explain why they're controversial, but this one is like, you could just tell them. Silent Man, Hill. I, I feel like I'm pausing after like each one now, but I, I always have something interesting. You guys know that the Kennedy family lobotomized their daughter? <laughs> I was We were talking about this on the podcast recently. I didn't know how fucked up that was, but uh, I don't remember what year. The mom and dad Kennedy had their daughter undergo a lobotomy. Her name was Rosemary. Because she had like mood swings and, and shit like that. So they had her lobotomized and it was horrifying, the report. And then I think the lobotomy even won a prize for the, the science behind it or whatever, but... Basically, they were poking her brain through her eye socket, I believe. And when they were making cuts, they would have her recite the Lord's Prayer out loud. So she was awake during this, by the way. So as they were, like, making cuts, she would have to be reciting the Lord's Prayer as well as um, singing the National Anthem. That's what it was. And when she started being incoherent, they would stop cutting. And the result of the lobotomy is she... Her intelligence, her, her like mental capacity diminished to that of a two year old child. She was incontinent and couldn't live on her own anymore. And so, what they did is they basically got her like her own unit, like her, her own place to stay, and completely forbid anyone from knowing where she was and know or uh, and visiting her. Like, her mom and dad never visited her for like 40 years or something. The rest of the family didn't even know about it. And it didn't come to light until like the 80s, I think, the 70s or 80s, where the lobotomy is more well known. And then they tried to reintegrate her into the family. But I mean, by that point, she'd been living in that facility for like 60 years. And then she died, I think, in 2005. So yeah, I was reading about that the other day. It was fucked up, man. They lobotomized her over mood swings. 
a legitimate lobotomy. Source beyond Wikipedia? Oh, there's so much on it. Like, you can get the cliff notes from Wikipedia if you want. But there are, like, I think there was an entire, like, giant book written about it. And I think there was a movie, a documentary. I can't remember now. But, man, it was a wild story. Yeah, they, was, they sent her right to a lobotomy. Hill, Homecoming, 2008. I'm sure we've all played or at least heard Things of the Silent Hill series. The and I'm engineer. still pissed PT was cancelled. Fun fact, I actually use the PT soundtrack sometimes for my videos in the background. Homecoming was the sixth installment in the Silent Hill series and follows the journey of Alex Shepard, a soldier returning from war to his hometown where he finds his town in disarray and his younger brother is missing. As he continues on his search to find his younger brother, he discovers more I about didn't know the this order, was controversial. Cult, I streamed as well as the game. town's history and his own past. Okay, a Silent Hill game. Why is this on the list? The game is literally banned in Australia. Apparently it's due to extreme violence, but more specifically a certain scene in the game. This scene shows Alex having a drill forced into his right eye socket, causing a lot of blood to spew out. I couldn't find an HD version of this scene, since the scene is a quick time event, everyone just posted what happens when you succeed. I only found this extremely pixelated version. Damn, that's hardcore. Get banned in Australia, behind, idiot. Eternal Forces, 2006. I don't Left know this behind one. Eternal Forces is a Christian strategy game. In the single player campaign, the player controls the Tribulation Force, a Christian group in a post rapture New York City who are combating the influence of the global community peacekeepers, the world government led by the Antichrist Nicole Carpathia. Oh, I didn't know the that player directs the actions of the main characters and the Tribulation Forces unit in an effort to defeat the global community peacekeepers by converting neutral and global community allied civilians to their side and only only using lethal Move force over against Starcraft. the Antichrist army Lord's forces here when now. necessary. But the player's main goal is to use conversion rather than violence, only resorting to combat when necessary, since killing causes the quote spirit level of the player's units to drop. This was a very controversial game as it quite literally is telling you if you don't believe in Christianity or are an atheist, well, you're wrong. Other than that, the <laughs> game's reviews are extremely negative. Like, it's just a bad game in general. Which is gonna be a common thing in these games. That's not super not controversial. Silent Hill's great. I just want to make that. That's clear. like every the Christian next game. The next one, uh, if you're a lonely teenager, that's a guy, or at least you like girls, you're gonna love the next one. Dead or Alive Extreme Series. Hey, these now. are classics. The regular Dead or Alive games are a part of the fighting series that began in 1996, developed by Team Ninja and Tecmo. The game always had very uh jiggly physics. So much so that in 2003, the spin-off series, Dead or Alive Extreme Beach well, Volleyball, like was created. Those games are exactly that. The girls yeah, from the game played volleyball time. in little clothing with a lot of jiggle physics. As the years went on, well, graphics only improved. We went from polygons to this. Now, yeah, as one can imagine, we did. the games received much backlash for being Evolution. sexist and being a way to just, uh, creep on girls, I guess. The backlash in the US was so loud that the game developers released an official statement on Twitter explaining that they will not release the game anywhere except Asia. Asia because they oh. respect the different global audiences. And the game was still released in the US the very next year. The VR version of Dead or Alive Extreme 3 takes things to the next level. You can get There's as a up close VR to the version as you want. And let me tell you, it is graphic. Like the girls Brother, just sit there he's and you, selling can, like me said, on it. you just get as close as you want. Dude, I found a playlist of uh, this user on YouTube, I guess, that would upload getting up close and personal to every girl in the game yeah, and every right. single video on that playlist is age restricted and the comments are just calling him out for being like a weirdo again this is why <laughs> some clips are blurred if you're a fan of the dead or alive series let me know this spin-off dead or alive extreme do you think it's misogynistic or sexist or at the very least creepy let me know your thoughts i really want to know the dead or alive fan base's thoughts on that spin-off they don't make the fighting games anymore this do video is sponsored by atlas vpn atlas vpn it's is only dead or alive your volleyball now right hides your virtual location when connected to a vpn server your device is connected to a new ip and dns address all of that traffic is encrypted and routed towards that vpn server when the traffic arrives at the server no, the not VPN anymore server that's a shame information dead or alive 3 is actually a really good game atlas well at least VPN it was is available on iPhone it's pretty innovative. Mac you could bust PC. people through Currently, the stages, which is, is really cool a three -year for its time. Deal for just one ninety nine a month with a thirty day money back guarantee. The deal won't last for long, so make sure to check it out by clicking the link in the description below. Let me show you guys something really cool you could do with it, and that's it's saving really so money. So many websites have their pricing adjusted Monia. based on the region that your device is in. With the information provided by cookies and IP addresses, these services can guess where you're located. Dead or Alive Six was twenty. To like oh, India, for example, the price of whatever you're looking at will see a huge drop. We've tried this out on many different websites, including airline companies. 
companies, subscription services like Spotify, YouTube Premium, and Netflix. Again, guys, Atlas VPN is running a three-year deal for just $1.99 a month with a 30-day money-back guarantee. More so Elden Ring runs tonight. Make sure no, to click the, the link in the description now. below. The new patch gutted it. So we ethnic have to wait. cleansing 2002 now this one is self-explanatory when Jesus it comes Christ. to why it's controversial ethnic cleansing is a first-person shooter video game for windows computers created by the american white supremacist and hate organization national alliance it's a unique name what? as part of a quote race war the player controls a neo see skinhead or a clansman and is tasked with killing stereotypical african mexican and jewish enemies i don't even know if you can find download links for this but i don't even know i want to include this fuck? in the video actually if you guys are watching this then i guess i made it in i don't even want to talk about this one anymore uh, I haven't Andreas, heard of that one, actually. Hot Coffee Mod, 2004. Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, the most iconic game in the GTA franchise, was not only controversial due to the fact that you play as a criminal that can cause a rampage at any given moment, but also due to is something that never made its way into the final release the of the game. Window. Hot Coffee is an unofficial name for a minigame. The minigame is not playable through normal means. The game must be modded in order to access it. When enabled, Hot Coffee allows the protagonist, CJ, to have animated sex with an in-game girlfriend where you mm -hmm. can control his movements. According to the GTA Wiki, before development concluded, Rockstar Operations Director Jennifer Colby warned Dan Hauser that explicit sexual content would likely bring restrictive assessments from rating boards, harming retail sales. I made a whole video could on not this. Be fully removed, so the content was hidden from players using cutscenes. Data miners discovered evidence of explicit sexual content after San Andreas was released for the PlayStation 2 in October 2004, and confirmed its existence when the Windows version was released on June 7, 2005. Modder Patrick Wildenborg released a patch to unlock the hey, minigame two days later. This led to San Andreas becoming embroiled in controversy. Within a month of the patch's release, the ESRB and Australian I remember the company wide meeting after this evaluated San Andreas nice. content rating. The ESRB re-rated the game to adults only, leading several retailers to pull it from the shelves. It's really rare, but there are some San Andreas boxes that do have the adult only ESRB rating, and those can be found on eBay. While the OFLC issued a refused classification banning it from sale in Australia, Rockstar recalled all retail copies of San Andreas and released a new version that blocked access to Hot Coffee by the end of 2005 and issued an official patch for existing owners to prevent access. The Hot Coffee code remains in all versions of San Andreas but takes more effort to restore due to missing models and animations. In August 2005, Rockstar North released an official cold coffee patch for the PC version of the game and re-released San Andreas with the Hot Coffee scenes removed, allowing the game to return to its rated M for mature rating. Nice. Welcome back. Border Patrol, 2002. Back in the Flash player days, many games were being created I don't know daily, this one either. And most of them were extremely fun. I can't mention Flash games without giving a shout out to Newgrounds and Con yeah. and any unblocked game website that I would go on when I was bored using a Chromebook in class. But with so many games what? being made, it makes sense that some would cross what the line. What the fuck school say, was that? You get a Chromebook in class? What? Lo prometo. Border Patrol is a flash-based game that lets players shoot at Mexican immigrants as they try to cross the border into the United States. The game's opening screen states, there's one simple rule, keep them out at any cost. In Border Patrol, players are told to target one of three immigrant groups, portrayed in a negative stereotypical way as the figures cipher? rush past a sign that reads, welcome to the United States. The immigrants are very, uh... I guess, stereotypical? Honestly, it's just a very racist game against Mexicans. Yeah, that one's very Bone racist. Town, 2008. Bone Town is an, adult an old action flash adventure game. video game developed and published by American Studio Dub Software. Released for Microsoft Windows on November one. 12, 2008, the game follows a player as he completes missions and has sex with various women. A man in a suit approaches and explains you that he is part of an nuts. organization called the man. He warns the player that public indecency is illegal, and if the player is caught, he will be arrested. The player goes through the game completing missions in the style of like the GTA games. Missions include participating in graphic films and beating up someone who believes they are Jesus. Women are scattered throughout the city, and the player is able to have sex with any of them. Sex wow. can either be for the player's enjoyment or to recover in-game health, depending on the position selected. The game requires the player to match the desires of the women in order to last as long as possible. VTech Ramp. I didn't know it was that deep. I don't want to talk a lot about this one, so I'm going to try to make this one quick. Only three Maybe weeks after the Virginia explosive? Tech incident, Ryan Lamborn from Australia created a spin-off RPG. And while doing research, man, fuck this guy. The source I read said he only did it just to be offensive and he thought it was funny. That's it. That's why he recreated this Virginia Tech incident and yeah, sounds about made right. it into a 
I guess, a funny video game for him. The first mission of the game requires you to kill... I'm not even going to say her name, but it's like an, the actual first victim of the shooting. Not only that, but as I was reading, in 2013, this same idiot released another game based on Handy Suck. I'm not going to say it, so I changed the first letters because I'm not trying to get demonetized. Yep, but that yeah, he sounds about right. Video game like that. And, uh, Giant honestly, fucking fuck him, loser. Let's move on. Blay, 2006. Yep. Blay is a 3D this is the most well video game one. made by Illusion, released on April 21st, 2006 in Japan. Eroge means Japanese erotic video game. The game centers around a male character that you control, whose goal is to a mother and her two kids, specifically her two daughters. Three years after its initial release, the game garnered international attention and controversy for its content, resulting in it being banned in several countries. In story mode, the player controls a sex offender with a history of previous arrests. The protagonist SAs two minors and an adult woman, and the minors' ages are 12 years old and 17 Holy years shit. old. Holy shit, I didn't know after that. After the player finishes all three women, they unlock free play mode. Following its release, the game was banned Holy in several fuck. countries, excluding Japan. In fact, articles in defense have also been written, many noting that rape is considered a lesser crime than murder, yet there are thousands of legal video I games mean, there's a the lot of like, enemies. Yeah, that was people's tie. argument. They would be like, it's not as bad as killing people. So all the Call of Duty games are worse than this. Illusion's response to the controversy was basically, hey, it's okay in Japan. So if you guys don't like it, well, we're in Japan. As an immediate aftermath, several erosions publishers doubled down and studios began to ban foreigners from their official websites they, they really like what they do man and they, they will stand for it this is probably the do worst they still make the games last. this list was a nine in the order this just ended up being last thanks for you so bad the video make sure you leave a like i wonder if they're still around hold on let me look that up well that's pretty dangerous to look up on stream let me do that on my phone actually they are still around let me see what they make now i know that so there was rape lay and they also made Battle Raper, if I remember correctly. Like, I guess their whole thing is making rape-based video games. At least I think it was them that made Battle Raper. I don't really know. I guess it could have been someone else, too. Thanks to the Prime Attack. I can't find their Wikipedia page. Oh, here it is. Yep, it was them. Oh, they even made a suit. They have Battle Raper, Battle Raper 2, Rape Lay. And I guess that's their whole rape series. Then they are still making games. Wow. <laughs> wow. Well, what do you know? There's no Wikipedia pages for any of them that are recent except for this one called Honey Select. So you modify virtual men and women and direct them to do porn and fetish scenes. But apparently this one's just supposed to be, like, porn. There's no, like, rape in it. I don't know. Weird company, though. And if you guys like the content, it would be awesome one, if you sadly, subscribe. If you don't Brian want to, Zappy. that is completely okay with me. And make sure to stream Cherry Soda when it is out. Please be there for the premiere. Again, it is February 24th at 6 p.m., PST. Convert that to whatever time zone you're in. So it can be easier for you. Literally just turn on post notifications. You'll get a notification on your phone right when it's like about to premiere. After Cherry Soda, literally back to more of the videos. And uh, that's it for this video. I'll see you guys mm -hmm. next time I upload. Bye, Tov.